Welcome to another episode of the uh, Cook with the Wing King. Today, we're gonna do burgers, right? Obviously, I know it's been chicken up till now, but I'm very comfortable and confident in the kitchen. So, I'm gonna show you how to make the burgers that I make, that I've sold. I've had a whole bunch of compliments previously about how good these burgers are. So, I'm just gonna show you a couple little tricks that you can do to get, like, Make sure it's nice and dark, you get that good char on it, um, and the flavors and the seasoning. All right? Please like and um, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends about it. Let's get the views up so that um, we can get a whole bunch of people watching it and we can get all these secrets out that I'm trying to give out. All right? You know, these games were fun, but now the fun's over. <laughs> it's time to go to work. And the watch ball below and finish at the rim. To get the ball inside, moments ago that good penetration, finding that open jumper for the three, but they've got to keep Ford out of it. My name is Olu Babylona, former professional basketball player, now cooking. Buffalo wing beef chicken wing. Chicken wing. So now we'll do the blue cheese. Beef mince here, it's 80-20. Uh, so in America, you guys call it 80-20. Over here in the UK, that basically just means 80% beef, 20% fat. Um, to be specific, this is actually 23% uh, fat, right? So it's not 80-20, um, but the more fat you can get in there, it's really good, but you don't want to get too much because then two things, one, the beef the one, set when you try and cook it and also it will just be greasy and it won't taste as good so you want a good bit of meat and then a good bit of fat to season the beef but not so that it separates all right so this is um 500 grams so for 500 grams and the first tip that i'm going to say is if you have a food processor again you can use that and just blitz an onion half an onion up red onion as well make sure you use red onion all right but I'm just going to use a box grater because I feel like not everybody has a food processor but for sure you should have a grater and if you don't you can go buy one for any store for the cheap what two three pound four pound five pound maximum all right so grate about half a red onion now the reason why we use red is because when you cook this one of the aesthetics of it uh, to look at is the good nice dark char right you want it to be nice and dark you want a crust and red onion you get a darker char from than if you were to use a yellow onion all right so make sure you use a red onion use about half and use the smallest setting or the greater all right so usually on these graders you've got the big one and then you've got the mediocre then you've got the tiny one all right so use that small one so that it really really breaks the onion down so it comes out as like a slush but then again, as I said, make sure you use half because if you use too much of the onion, just like if you use too much fat, the burger uh, break up when you cook it. So make sure you use half an onion. Make sure you use, don't use too much. If you're not sure, go under. But it's definitely better to go under than over because you don't want to start cooking your burger and it just goes all over the place, all right? So the best way to do this is in a circular motion. Just go around. And it will take a while, but once you start to see it come out, then you know you're in the right direction. So as you say, half an onion, no more. If anything, go less. But you don't want to do too much because once you start to bring the burger together, you don't want it to uh, separate once you start to cook it in the uh, sauté it, right? It's a lot of work. <laughs> I hope, I hope, it's home from work we go. So if you've got a fruit processor, definitely use that. But again, as we said, not everybody has that. And I'll try and keep things as simple as possible so that you know that anybody can create these dishes. So once you've got half an onion, mix that in. I don't understand these people that use um, egg and all these extra things they take to bind it. If you've got good quality meat, you don't need no egg. You don't need anything like that. All you want to do is half an onion then you want to season it up. Once you put the half an onion in, 
two things you need as far as seasoning wise. You need a steak seasoning, which usually has no salt. Then you want to add another seasoning that has some sort of salt in. So most steak seasonings don't have salt, but some do. So make sure you check. Um, use your favorite steak seasoning. In the UK over here, I like this Schwartz. Um, in America, what's it called? I forget what it's called. But it's, it comes in a big, like this, but we can't get it over here. So I just stick to the Schwartz. Um, but just make sure, the most important thing is, if your steak seasoning does have salt, then just use that alone. But if it doesn't, like most of them do not, then use your steak seasoning and another seasoning with salt. So for 500 grams of meat, you want to go with two tablespoons of steak seasoning that has no salt. If it does have salt, go with about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half. Two is a bit much, it will be a bit too salty. Alright, so it just doesn't have any salt. Two tablespoons, and then you can use any other seasoning salt that you prefer, <clears throat> provided it's got salt in. And you know what I'm using? My own bread. Alright, the Wing King's uh, Mama seasoning, which you can always get off the website uh, www.wingkings.co.uk. And I want with two teaspoons because the steak seasoning, it's got a lot of seasoning, it's got a lot of flavor in it. You don't need much of any other seasoning. The reason why we use any other one is just for the salt benefit. That's all we need from it, all right? So once you've got that in, mix it, but don't over mix it. If you mix it too crazy, too much, it's gonna to be tough. It's gonna to be a tough burger, all right? So try and keep the fibers as separate as possible. So what we do is, I go about 170 grams per burger. That's a really big burger. But um, that's just how, I, everything I do, I serve is big, it's just what it is. I can't help it. They're ginormous. Right, um, it's big, but if you if you over mix it, it take longer to cook. Uh, 170 grams per burger, not over mix. It won't take it won't take too long. Right, so I've been doing this a while, so I know for sure that that's very very close to 170 grams. It's definitely between 168 and 172 for sure. Don't have uh, scales, don't need it. All right, so if you want to be more you know, precise, I'll get you some scales and um, measure up at 170 grams. Once we've got here, round it off and then press it down. Be gentle, you don't want to do too much with it. All right, and try and press, press it as flat as you can and as even as you can. And also take note that the size of the burger is going to shrink a tiny bit once you put it on the flame, yeah, because obviously it's a meat, and it, once it hits a hot flame, it's going to seize up and be a little bit smaller, all right. Also, it needs to be somewhat flat because if it's too thick, the middle won't cook um, at all, it'll be raw. And I know some people like that, but I don't really, me, when I serve food, I will never serve it like rare unless it's been asked, unless the customer says. I want it red, in which case, and obviously, we'll do that, but naturally, I usually go medium well for a burger, alright? So, flatten it out, the only no egg, don't need anything like this, you don't have to bind it, whatever these chefs say. Again, I'm not a chef, I'm a cook, and from a cook's perspective, don't need any of these things, provided that you've got good quality meat, it will cook well as it is, and it will stick together. Good quality meat and not too much onion, alright? Okay, so once those are set, get them all the way, and what we'll do now, the sauce, the burger sauce, alright? So burger sauce is very similar to Thousand Island dressing, and so um, for the burger sauce, we'll go with <coughs> a cup of mayonnaise, alright? Just one cup of mayo, and the ketchup is a preference thing. I like two tablespoons of ketchup, or some people like it a bit more. Um, you want the sauce to be a pink color. So, two tablespoons for me makes it a good pink. Um, the more ketchup you go with, obviously, the darker it will get. But I'll, for me, my personal preference, one cup meal, two tablespoons of ketchup. I think you could go three, but that's a maximum. All right? Then you want to go two teaspoons of uh, Himalayan sea salt, one tablespoon 
of Worcestershire sauce. And then if you can get a hold of it, it's not a, you don't have to, it's fine if you cannot, but if you can get a hold of a liquid smoke, right, you want it literally two dashes, about a teaspoon, not much. This, got, this stuff goes a long way. And all it does, it gives it a nice smoky flavor if you're not grilling, all right? So this is just like a grill equivalent. Not everyone, this is the UK. There's no, <laughs> you get like a week, a year to grill because of the weather. So uh, go very, very little, much on that. Um, that's less than a teaspoon, all right? Just uh, two dashes. Mix that in. There's so much you can do with this. You can add red onion if you want. Chop that nice and fine or grate. When you grate the onion for the burger, you can throw some of that in there if you want to. Or you can um, garlic, uh, a, a clove of garlic in there. But there's going to be so much flavor with the burger that it, for me it's not necessary. Okay, you've already got the onion in the burger, which is going to make it nice and moist and give it a nice dark color as we expressed, uh, explained earlier. So you've got the burger, it's a cheeseburger. We're going to have cheese, we're going to have veg, we're going to have the sauce. We don't necessarily need all uh, onion, garlic, and all these other things in the sauce, all right? So just those ingredients there, uh, mayo, ketchup, salt, tiny bit of liquid smoke, if you have it, no big deal if you don't. Worcestershire sauce, good to go. And that's your burger sauce. Yeah. Once the sauce is ready, everything's good to go. Burgers are good to go. Uh, we're gonna cook them on the gas top over there. Um, if you have a griddle pan, I mean, just for like the aesthetics, use that. If not, any kind of saucepan you have, whatever it is you have, it's all good, just so long as you've got a, a big enough pan, if you're gonna cook more than one, um, so that they don't touch each other, so they've got a lot of space to breathe and cook thoroughly, cook through all the way, all right? Yeah. All right, what you wanna do, turn your hob on, highest heat you got, put the griddle pan on or whatever pan you're using, put it on, and leave it for five minutes minimum, right? Get it as hot as you can, right? You want that good char. The good char comes from the instant heat as soon as you put the burgers in, right? Once it starts to smoke, like this is right now, it's smoking, that's good to go, right? So these two burgers will fill in here just about, because as I said, you don't want them to touch, right? So make sure you've got good space, and when you pull it on, as you hear it, start to sear straight away, like that. Alright, so get your two burgers on, make sure they're evenly, flat them out evenly so they can cook all the way evenly. Alright, and make sure you get them on the bottom, don't try not to get it on the side. I want to set on, leave them, don't touch them, don't mess with them, um, get that good chop. Alright, if you mess with them, they'll, they'll stick, they'll do all sorts of like just things you don't need them to do, not only will it stick, uh, you won't get the good color. Just leave them, don't mess with it. Um, and that's how you'll get that good, nice color. If you, don't, if you have a good pan, hopefully you get the lines across, but that's just for the look. <coughs> no big deal. If you don't have a good pan, just use a sauce pan. The, rule, the uh, same rules apply. Leave it, just let it cook for a good while. And it's important that you've got the 80 20 minimum because we didn't put no oil in there at the beginning, if you notice. There was no oil. With 20% fat, the oil will start to seep out, and that will uh, release the burgers, so they won't stick to the bottom of it, and it will also flavor the burgers, all right? So leave it for a good four or five minutes, then we flip it, all right? So once the burgers are cooked, you want to create some steam. Now, this pan doesn't have a lid, so you, but you want to cover it. So what you want to do is, the reason why you want to create steam is to melt the cheese, right? So you put the cheese on, put them on the burgers. Now, if there was a, fully, a proper lid for this, it would probably be a bit better. But when you have a griddle pan, it's probably not going to be a lid. So to create steam, a little bit of water, cover it up, right? Like you can see that steam, that cheese is already pretty much melted, right? So leave it for about 15-20 seconds, provided the burger is fully cooked, and then we're good to go. Yeah. Burger is cooked, everything's ready to go. So, what I suggest and what I serve is a three layer burger for two reasons. Sorry, one reason. I like the, the beef to be by itself 
and the veg just you know, touch the beef, right? Because obviously you've got to have your, um, your veg is going to be cold from the fridge, fresh, and the beef's fresh off the griddle. So you don't want them to touch because, I don't know, I just feel like it creates warmness as opposed to hot or cold. And you get a better contrast to me when you've got a nice hot burger with melted cheese and nice cold tomatoes, lettuce, or whatever you want to top your burger with, all right? To create that, you need three layers, all right? So in most stores nowadays, you can get this right here. Look, one, two, three, right? You can buy three layer burgers, okay? So the first thing you want to do is you want to butter each layer. Now, my American people, I know you guys don't really use the butter on the bread thing, so you got to trust me on this and try it, okay? Over here in the UK, if there's bread, there's butter. It's just a rule. It's just, there's no arguing, there's no debating. If there's bread, there's butter. If there's toast, there's butter. If there's not, you're weird. That's how people over here view it. And if you try it, trust me, I feel like you will understand and agree. It's a whole nother level of flavor, all right? So you, this is just regular plain butter. You can use um, garlic butter if you want. I feel like that's a bit excessive to me. But um, just go with the regular butter and butter all three layers, okay? Now this is brioche. Brioche bun. Brioche is made with a whole ton of butter, okay? So, even with the brioche bun, we're still gonna butter the bread. Because if there's bread, there's butter. Trust me. Cool. So, you butter the bread, tomato, cut you some nice slices of tomato. Don't make them too thick because it just gets a bit weird. You don't want them to be as thick as the burger. All right, so cut you some nice tomato. Um, optional, it's up to you. Me, I like my red onion. So if you like whatever onion you prefer, on this one you can do what you want. I don't, it doesn't have to be red, but you know I love the red onion. So, but cut the, cut the onion super duper thin, okay? You don't want too much onion on there. As thin as you can go, and you don't need much at all, all right? So, the bottom layer, the bottom of, of the bun is where the sauce and the veg goes. So, get you a good amount of sauce, but not too much, because if you get too much sauce, everything gets real slippy, and the burger won't uh, stick together, okay? So, um, sauce, lettuce, tomato, red onion, all right? Close that off. Once that's closed off, grab your burger. A little bit more sauce, not too much, don't overdo it. Because the sauce on top of the cheese works really well. All right? Cap it, top of the brioche part. Once we're cooked and ready to go, Cheeseburger with homemade burger sauce, lettuce, red onion, um, butter the buns, and tomato. Thanks for watching another episode of Cook with the Wing King. Burgers, try it. I'm telling you now, it's a great burger. Um, however you cook it for, we'll enjoy it. Um, cook it with wedges or fries. Or additionally, you can add an onion ring in the burger, which I've got the best onion rings again that you'll ever have. Which we're gonna, it's gonna be another video. You can watch that. And my wedges, my wedges game is nice too. I got some uh, wedges that I'm gonna show you guys how to do too. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching again. Try this, like, subscribe, share, all the good stuff, uh, and let's get everybody watching. Cook with the winking. Thank you.